So, hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Awesome Feeder Beast Engineering with Noxer. Uh, for today, I am going to show off my latest creation, this. So, now you might wonder, what on earth is this? And some of you might guess, um, regarding the green fluid and the poor villagers you see over there. I ran into a problem. Um, on my uh, let's play map and it was I needed emeralds so I tried to do some fail attempts which you can see over there at generating emeralds and it ended up with me saying screw this and doing it the a bit more sophisticated way anyway I am going to this episode is probably gonna be a bit long because this is pretty much three machines which are integrated together for creating a system. So it's this thing, which is a um, um, a, 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 a mob essence generation plant, which uh, for the record is 100% self-sustaining. So you don't need any input, no power, nothing to get this to work, which is why it's quite nice. Uh, and you also get some output from it in the matter of both, both uh, of course. Uh, my business, but also some power and um, and some other cool stuff. Uh, over here, we have a spawner I built with a computer craft control automation system. And over here, we have a emerald farm, which actually produces mistcraft pages uh, and has potential for actually producing other stuff. So that's kind of sweet. So let's dig in here. Um, I'm gonna try to put in the description some times um, for when I start talking about these diff this different things. So look there if you don't want to listen to everything. Anyway, I'll start down here with this blaze farm. So, um, this is a pretty basic setup. I have a auto spawner spawning blazes on top of conveyor belts, which drags them in towards these melee turtles. Uh, these melee, melee turtles are run, all running a very simple program, which pretty much just attacks, uh, collect items in front of them, and outputs upwards to these iron chests. This is where the fun thing starts. Um, I actually put up this item duct, which transport the blaze rods from this farm over here to this low pressure boil attack and I actually scaled this it was a bit of work but I managed to do that so for this blaze farm which is a standard setup 9x9 9 9, um, 2x2x3 two by two by is a perfect setup if you use low pressure boiler tanks for not running out blaze rods this actually goes up fairly slowly uh, producing steam then this steam is used to run this turbine from uh, big reactors, which is pretty much the most efficient way to produce uh, RF. So, just a point uh, here is that you actually need a um, a servo in here, and this pumping out, or else it won't output enough to um, actually empty this. So, yeah, uh, with this setup I got here, I don't know if it's optimal. Uh, I use Electrum because it's a bit cheaper. And stuff, um, but I got the quite decent setup here with uh, which generates 1.1k or per tick, which is quite nice for like a blaze farm. Um, yeah, so this power is drawn back, connected back into the farm itself. So the farm ru runs itself; it produces its own fuel, which is nice. Also, we have this sewer setup here for producing our mob essence. Which is then thrown into this tank here. I set up a computer craft program here with a computer because I had the problem with that um, if I pump everything into this tank, it might actually run out of um, of um, mob essence over here. So um, yeah, this this uh, pro uh, computer pretty much runs a program which um, when this rise, uh, rises above 10k mob essence, it pretty much gives a pulse to this flow duct, so it empties out a bit. We'll probably see it right now there. 
So it linked them. We got some mob essence in there. So that's pretty neat. Um, for connecting to the uh, to the mob spawner itself, I use this Ender IO. I don't think I don't know if everybody is familiar with those, but it's pretty much cables and pipes that you can run in clusters. So, for instance, here I am running a any conduit on the same block as I am run, uh, running a fluid a fluid conduit. So that allows me to like transport a lot of stuff um, in a very small space, which is needed here because I only have like one spot to enter into the uh, delt spawner. So that's pretty. That's very neat. Um, okay, so let's move 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 over here and look at the back of this thing. So this turbine here it produces more um, power than. Uh, is actually needed for running this thing. So on this side over here, I have a output, but this needs to be controlled because if I just output everything over here, there might be too little power for the spawner, so it might stop. So I set up a um, computer here running a uh, energy control program, which uh, pretty much gives a redstone signal to this uh, energy cell, and it actually doesn't uh, affect the input into the cell from the turbine, what it does affect is the output. Because if this energy cell is full, um, and it doesn't output, it can't take an input. So I set this to like keep this at 50%. So, okay, this is not working right now. Okay, so for some reason my, um, my output uh, program didn't work earlier, but I somehow fixed it. So you can see here that uh, once the energy drops below 50%, it starts building up again. And when it goes over, it starts dropping again. And what happens with this dropped energy is that it goes over here and gets outputted um, to this energy bridge. Uh, the reason I put this up is just because I pretty much like to build craft uh, energy storage system more. Uh, so that's pretty neat. So let's go over to the next contraption. Oh wait, I, I'm just gonna mention that um, uh, I'm actually s uh, storing these uh, this mob essence in this tank and the places, the reason I get more mob essence out of this than I use is because these places generate so much experience it takes 150 mob essence, mill buckets of mob essence to spawn a place and um, when they go into their experience going into this sewer and you know it's mob essence, I get more way more than 150 mil bucket. So that's why I get the output. That's that this day. Um anyway, to the next contraption. So I built this spawner. It is pretty basic. Um you have probably seen uh similar setups. But I'll show it off anyway. So the way this works is that I have this panel here, which gives input to this computer, which over RedNet, uh, a wireless modem, sends this to this turtle, which controls which Safari net to send into this spawner in here. So the turtles have pretty much the same setup as the Blaze one, and we get loot from this. So if I, for instance, click cow here, you can see that it sends some signals. One for getting the old one out, and another one for placing the new one. And if I look in here, I see that cow one is missing. So that one is in there now. And that is done by having um, this setup, item connect from Ender IO. And be sure to set it to both input and output, because otherwise it can't go both ways. Um, if this gets a redstone signal from these uh, redstone conduits, it will output um, and place it in the next inventory. So that's the one in there. And I also have this other cable running in there. Uh, this doesn't actually have to be seen, so you can place this in a wall or whatever. Um, and of course, all this is run on programs. Um, they are, I have done them myself. They are fairly complicated. Um, so not, not really something for beginners, but they're not too hard. Um, I will post them in the description if I, if I remember it. Um, so anyway, if I go none here, it just picks the, the old one up. And you'll see the, that you get some output here in the turtle. That's mainly for debug purposes. So 
So you get output over here. And if you just modify the program just a little bit, uh, you can easily add more uh, Safari nets in here for other mob spawns. So that's pretty neat. You can have up to 15 because the last one needs to be empty um, for program reasons. Um, but anyway, so you can have 15 different different mobs here to spawn. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and just to add, uh, this turbine here creates enough power to power this too. So still no input needed. So for the last, uh, the third and last thing I built is a emerald generator. So this is pretty much in here. We have a spawner which spawns, you can guess it, villagers. So what it does is uh, there is conveyor belts in here pushing them towards this conveyor belt and they fall down. I think if we can get a glimpse in here, yeah. And they fall down there and go this way and into this smeltery. And when they are hurt by the liquefied emerald, they are actually um, turned into liquefied emerald. So I think I have a problem here. There seems like some blood got stuck in here for some reason. Um, but anyway, that, that's actually easily fixed. Um, I could just make another faucet and just pump it out into a void pipe or whatever. Uh, but anyway. Okay, so I created this little automated system for um, for getting rid of unwanted uh, fluids. I got some kind of weird thing going on here. I don't really know. That's a lot of emeralds. But anyway, so um, I just created this. Uh, that's a drain. And we have a fluid duct which has emerald blacklisted and a void pipe. So that will pretty much pump out everything which we uh, don't want. And this emerald actually is going over the edge here. So, okay. Anyway. Um, so what this does normally is that you have this timer and that's it for one minute. That's exactly the time you need for this basin to fill up and this item dock to pull out this emerald, emerald block. So what it does it, it puts it into this uh, out, uh, out workbench and then the cool stuff happens. So I actually didn't write this program myself. I, um, I modified it a little bit. Uh, because it was a bit buggy, but uh, I got it from some an anonymous dude, um, so I can't give any credit, but it's really awesome. What it does is, it uses this trading post from Extra Utilities, because there's villagers over here, so why not trade with them while they are dying? So, th what this trading post does is that it gives us all the receipts, or I mean uh, all the trade deals, or villagers in range. That's like a box of 32, uh, 32 blocks, I think, or something. So it's a quite long range. So I can just like trade here, just choose something and trade. But I actually automated this with this other one's turtle. So what it does is, it has a um, a file where it saves all the pages it has bought this far. So it tries to buy new miscard pages. All the time. So you can see I got some here. Uh, I would probably have more if this costume basin didn't get um, jammed because of this blood. I don't know why that's in there. It's probably because something spawned in here and yeah. Uh, so I get emeralds in here, which if I had emeralds in here, let's spawn some in. Uh, this turtle here, it says failed to, buy, uh, failed to buy page right now, but that's because there is no emeralds. But if it finds a page here, which um, I don't have, which is not logged in the file uh, on my computer, it will buy that page. And just place it here, and then add that page to the file. So I will not get multiple uh, pages. So if I let this run for like a day, and it doesn't get jammed. Um, I actually will get all the pages, pretty much, there is to get. So you can also conf uh, configure it for pretty much whatever you want. Currently it's configured for, like I said, pages. But if I want, I can like configure it to buy all the Safari nets possible. Or I can ask it to trade paper for emeralds. I can do pretty much anything I want with this. 
So that's really awesome. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my setup here. Um, and uh, I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any other questions, I went through this quite quick now. There's really a much more much more details to speak about if I if I uh, want to go into that. But I want to keep it a bit short. So if you got any questions, please just leave a comment. And um, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, please subscribe because there would be more cool videos coming up. So thank you for this. And see ya!